Thank yeah, you, Madam yeah, Deputy yeah. Speaker. Protecting our communities is absolutely vital, and I, for one, would like to welcome the £14.1 million announced last week for Leicestershire Police, as well as the 89 police officers that are planned to come to our force. This will benefit our communities and support our communities. I would also like to welcome the raft of measures that have been brought in since 2010 to support victims of crime. Having worked at the Ministry of Justice in the Victims Team, I understand how important these changes have been. Having met with victims of trafficking, those whose loved ones are being held by terrorists in Iraq and Syria, victims of the Oxford grooming case, I know these measures have made a real difference, giving victims the confidence to go forward, be heard, get the justice they deserve and see the justice done. Now, isolation in Rutland and Melton is a real concern, and it really is one for rural communities across this country. It is made worse by rural crime, and my honourable friend from Milton Keynes North so, spoke passionately about this and from the heart, and so I will only try and do justice to his words. But the fact is, rural crime hits communities hard. I have over 150 villages in my constituency. It is made worse by slower emergency response times due to the vast distance they have to travel. And it is also made worse by the enormous economic impact of these crimes, because farmers, for too often, their workplace that has been struck by criminals is their home. So this is a double betrayal, a double attack that makes them feel vulnerable both at work and at home. Now, I stood on a commitment to tackle rural crime. Out knocking on doors in Great Dalby on Saturday morning, farmers came to find me on the streets to talk to me about rural crime, because over Christmas we saw an increase in the theft of tractors, of four by fours, of all sorts of different equipment that matters. Some of this equipment is worth multiple hundreds of thousands of pounds, and replacing it just isn't that easy because many farmers have to rely on buying second hand kit because first hand kit is so expensive. So it is very difficult for them to do. Now, one of the things I want us to do is work on tracking and identifying the organised crime networks responsible for these thefts because it is not isolated individuals who are taking opportunity, it is organised crime networks, and we need to crack down on them. I also want to see us do more on tougher sentencing for fly tipping because it's the absolute yeah, yeah. abdication of personal responsibility and the fact that it is left on farmers to deal with this horrendous crime is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know the police work very fast and I know they're working very hard but I want to see more commitment across Leicestershire from the Leicestershire Police and Crime Commissioner to see rural communities benefiting from police. Now organised crime is a scourge as I touched on and I welcome the significant impact that has been put into that. County lines is uh, funding to tackle county lines is helping protect market towns like mine that do not want to become victims of what is happening elsewhere, but also trafficking and on investment on extremist groups who operate like organised criminal groups. <coughs> now, last week we announced enormous investment in counter-terrorism and extremism measures, and those are enormously important. It, for me, particularly having worked in counter-terrorism, the minimum 14 years for the most serious terrorist offences is important, but I want to see us go beyond that. Because when someone commits the most serious terrorist offence, they are declaring war on every single citizen of this country. They are committing atrocities against civilians and they are saying, I reject everything that this country has given me. 14 years is not sufficient for those who are traitors. And that is when that word should be deployed. For many years, I've argued for the end of early release of terrorists. I'm ecstatic to see that brought in because it is so important. And I'm also very pleased to see the investment in ongoing management of former terrorists and those who have been responsible for extremism. But there is a question about when does radicalisation end, and it does not end the moment someone exits a prison door. My concern is that those who have been radicalised and radicalise others remain vulnerable for the entirety of their lives, because those things that made them vulnerable remain in place. So we must ensure that the risks continue to be managed for the lifetime of that individual. I would also like to praise the PREVENT programme which the opposition front bench were very keen to throw away. The PREVENT programme does enormous work, tackling everything from the far right through to Takfiri, Salafist extremism that we see. I would particularly like to praise the work of Will, uh, Will Baldert and Sean Arbuthnot, who in Leicestershire do incredible work on the front line of this. But finally, I would like to raise forgotten crimes and forgotten victims, and that is prison officers. Too often, crimes taking place in our prisons that nobody hears about and nobody knows about, and the victims are prison officers. In HMP Stock and in my constituency, just last week, a prison officer was attacked. Now, the guidelines say that when a prisoner attacks a prison officer, the, crime should not, the sentence 
should be not concurrent with the existing crime for which they are imprisoned. But unfortunately, the guidelines are not always being followed. And with the incredible work we are doing to support emergency workers and support those on the front line, we must ensure we support prison officers because they deserve that from us, because they do so much that is hidden behind those walls. Now, I'm sure the Minister will welcome that in the election, door after door, voters told me that only the Conservatives can be trusted on crime, law and order. Yeah, yeah. Across the whole of Europe, knife crime is up. So I will not accept arguments that Britain in some way is failing its people. It is an issue across the whole of Europe, and we should be looking to learn from across Western Europe about how we tackle it and make it better. But my key message to the ministers are, please, let's not forget rural communities and the staggering impact of crime on farmers and remote communities. We have to tackle the scourge of violent extremism throughout the lifetime of individuals who have been responsible for some of the most appalling acts, and I have been devastated throughout my career to see the impact of their actions. We must continue to invest in counter-terrorism, and we cannot forget our prison officers. But thank you for the investment you've made, and I know the police officers of Leicestershire are grateful for the investment that's been made into their services and the service they provide. Yeah. Yeah.